Looking for an easy crochet blanket pattern? This gorgeous and timeless, and may I say eye-catching, zigzag granny stitch blanket crochet pattern is perfect for all skill levels. Hello from Halifax. I'm Jo with Jo the World Creations. We're going to be getting right to the video tutorial. All the information such as amount of yarn required, the yarn weight, what hook size to use, it's all included in the free pattern which is available on my website and there's a link to that in the description below this video. To follow the same color combinations that I used, start by using pink and we're going to use pink until the end of row 4. However, for this video tutorial, to ensure that you can easily see what I'm doing, I'm going to use this purple color to start. We're going to start by making a slip knot. Place your slip knot on your hook and pull tight. To make the blanket the size that's listed in the pattern, chain 202. Or you can make a small swatch of the blanket with me I'm going to chain 52. You go ahead and make your number of starting chains and come back to the video. With your starting chains now made, we're going to begin row one. For all of row one, we are going to be working into the back ridge loops, which are these bumps along the back. We're going to start by working into the second chain from the hook. Here's the first chain, here's the second, and we're going to twist our work and find that second back ridge loop and insert our hook under this back ridge loop. This is the second one. Here's the first, here's the second. And into this back ridge loop, we're going to slip stitch very loosely. So working into the second chain from the hook, twist your work so you can see that back ridge loop, insert your hook into it, and then slip stitch loosely. We are going to be working into these slip stitches in the next row so we want to keep them nice and loose. And we're simply going to slip stitch into the back ridge loop of each chain all the way across. Working into the next chain still under the back ridge loop, insert your hook here, insert your hook into that next chain under the back ridge loop, and slip stitch very loosely. And that's all we're going to do across the row. We're just going to slip stitch very loosely in each chain all the way across. You go ahead and do that and come back to the video. I am almost finished working all the way across. I have one last chain to work into. Nothing special happens wanted to point out what this last chain looks like because it can sometimes get confusing with the slip knot. But we're still going to work into the back ridge loop of this last chain. And working into this last chain, we're going to slip stitch very loosely. Making this first row with slip stitches is going to help stop our blanket from curling. Now we're going to start row two. We're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to turn our work. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly point out how to work into the slip stitches that we made in the previous row. It may be easier to rotate your work slightly more towards you than you normally would because then you can clearly see the top two loops of the slip stitches. And we don't do anything special when we're working into them. We're treating them like how we would any other stitch and crochet normally. But when working into slip stitches, because they slant away from us, when you're looking at the back of them, you may think that this is where you insert your hook, but this is not where we want to insert our hook. We want to work into them regularly and work under the top two loops but thought it might be helpful if I pointed out how they slant away from you. And so just rotate your work a little bit and then crochet normally into them under the top two loops, just like you would any other stitch. We're going to start by working in the very first stitch. This is the stitch that's attached to that chain two we just made. 
and into this first stitch we are going to make one double crochet stitch. Working into this first stitch, make a double crochet stitch. Next, we're going to be repeating a set of instructions a total of three times. We are going to skip the next two stitches. Working in the next stitch, we are going to make three double crochet stitches all in the same stitch. And we're going to repeat those steps a total of three times. But let's take it one step at a time here. We're going to skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches all in the same stitch. In this pattern, whenever we make three double crochet stitches in the same stitch or space, that's called a cluster. Here's our first cluster made. We've just completed those instructions in the brackets one time. We're going to do it a total of three times, so we're going to now do it again. Skip the next two stitches, working into the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next two stitches in the next stitch. There's my first double crochet stitch. Second. And third. Now we're going to complete those instructions the third and final time. We're going to skip the next two stitches in the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. There's two and three. Now we're going to make our first peak. To make our first peak, we're going to skip the next two stitches and in the next stitch make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next two stitches in the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Next, we're going to chain two. One, two. And now we're going to work into the very next stitch. In this next stitch, we're going to make three double crochet stitches. I've just chained two, working into the next stitch. Make three double crochet stitches. It's okay if your slip stitches are still tight, even though we tried to make them very loosely. Just take your time. There's two. And there's three. Our first peak is now made. Next we are going to complete the instructions and brackets a total of two times. The first step is to skip the next two stitches and then the next stitch we're going to, can you guess what we'll do? Make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next two in the next make three double crochet stitches. We've now completed the instructions in brackets once and we're going to do that twice. Skip the next two stitches in the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Now we're going to begin the repeat portion of the row. This is what we're going to be repeating all the way across until there are six stitches left. The first step of the repeat is to make our first valley. We're going to skip the next two stitches and in the next stitch make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next two, in the next make three double crochet stitches. Now we're going to skip the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. We're not going to work in those five stitches. 
we are going to work into the next stitch and into this next stitch we are going to make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next five stitches, one, two, three, four, five. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Now we have our first valley. Continuing with the repeat, this is still part of what we're repeating all the way across. We are now gonna follow this set of instructions twice. Skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next two. In the next, make three double crochet stitches. We've now repeated those instructions once. Let's do it one more time. Skip the next two. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Now we're going to make our next peak. We're gonna skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Now we're gonna chain two, one, two, and then work into the very next stitch. And into this next stitch, we're going to make three double crochet stitches. Working into the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. There's our next peak. We're at the last part of the repeat. We're gonna complete these instructions a total of two times. We're gonna skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. And we're gonna do that one more time. Skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. You are now gonna repeat these instructions all the way across the row until there are six stitches left. Because I'm just making a little swatch for this tutorial, I'm already at my remaining six stitches. But if you're making the full blanket, continue to repeat these steps all the way across until you have six stitches left. Once you're at these six remaining stitches, this is what you do. You're gonna skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, make three double crochet stitches. Skip the next two. In the next one, three double crochet. You should now have three stitches left. We're gonna skip the next two stitches and in the very last stitch, make one double crochet stitch. Skipping the next two, in the last stitch, make one double crochet stitch. You can refer to the written instructions for a detailed stitch count. One note is that chains in this pattern never count as stitches. So the chain two we made to start the row doesn't count as a stitch, and the chain two that we made in each peak does not count as a stitch. Only count the double crochet stitches. Congratulations for completing that row. That was definitely the most difficult part of the pattern. It's just to set everything up and now it's gonna become super, super easy. The rest of the pattern is a simple one row repeat. We're now gonna start row three and this is what we'll be repeating for the rest of the pattern. To start row three, we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're gonna turn our work. We're gonna start by working into the top of the first stitch. This is the stitch that's attached to that chain two we just made. When I say work into the top, I mean work normally under both loops of this first stitch. Into the top of this first stitch, we are going to make one double crochet stitch. Working into this first stitch, make one double crochet stitch.
for the rest of the row until the very last stitch, we're only going to be working into cluster spaces. These are the spaces between these clusters. As a reminder, a cluster is a group of three double crochet stitches. Now there is a space right below this stitch that we just made. This space does not get worked into. The first place that we're gonna work after making this first double crochet stitch is into the next cluster space, which is the space between the first two clusters from the previous row. We're gonna now repeat the following set of instructions a total of three times. So we're not working into this space here. We're gonna work into the next cluster and make three double crochet stitches. There's my first, second, and third. We've now completed those instructions once and we're gonna do it a total of three times. We're gonna work into the next cluster space and make three double crochet stitches. Working into the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. And we're gonna repeat those instructions one more time. We're gonna work into the next cluster space. Working into this next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. Now we're going to make our first peak in this row. We're gonna be working into the chain two space. This is the space where we made a chain two in the previous row in between two clusters. Into this chain two space, we're going to do three things. We are going to make three double crochet stitches. There's one, two, and three. Now we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're gonna make three more double crochet stitches into the same chain two space. There's one, two, and three. And we've just made our first peak. Next, we're going to repeat the following instructions a total of three times, and we're simply going to make three double crochet stitches in each of the next three cluster spaces. Working into the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. I've repeated those instructions once so far. I'll do it again. In the next space, make three double crochet stitches. And let's do it one more time, working into the next cluster space. Now we're going to begin the repeat portion of the row. This is what we're gonna be repeating all the way across. The first step in our repeat is to skip the next cluster space. This is the space where we made a valley in the previous row and we are not gonna work into this. We are gonna skip this space. We're gonna go right into the next part of the instructions. In the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. So skip the valley cluster space, and going right to the next cluster space, we're going to make three double crochet stitches. Now we're gonna repeat that again. In the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. And in the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. We are now at the peak, and so into the chain two space, 
going to work directly into this chain two space and do three things. Into this chain two space, we're going to make three double crochet stitches. There's three. Now we're going to chain two, one, two, and working into the same chain two space, make three double crochet stitches. And the last part of the repeat is to work into the next cluster space and make three double crochet stitches and to repeat that three times. Working into the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. Working into the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. And then working into the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. These are the steps that you're going to repeat all the way across the row. When you have completed repeating those steps all the way across, your end of the row should look like this. The space between the last cluster and the first double crochet and the chain two from the previous row, this space here does not get worked into. To finish the row, we are going to make one double crochet stitch in the top of the very last stitch. And we're going to work normally under the top two loops and make one double crochet stitch into this last stitch. Working into this last stitch, make one double crochet stitch. And this is what you're going to be doing for the entire pattern. I use the same color until the end of row four. So let's do row four together and then we'll change colors. To start row four, which is repeating row three, we're going to chain two and turn. Working into the first stitch, make one double crochet stitch. In the next cluster space, three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, three double crochet stitches. At the peak in the chain two space, make three double crochet stitches, chain two, and make three more double crochet stitches in the same chain two space. In the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, three double crochet stitches. Now we begin the repeat portion of the row. We're going to skip the next cluster space, which is the valley cluster space, and work directly in the next cluster space and make three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, three double crochet stitches. In the peak, in the chain two space, three double crochet stitches, chain two, and make three more double crochet stitches in the same chain two space. In the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. In the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. And in the next cluster space, make three double crochet stitches. Those are the steps that you repeat all the way across the row. When you're at the end of the row, it'll look like this. You do not work into the space here. Your final step is to make one double crochet stitch in the top of the last stitch. Whether you're following the exact 
color combinations and the amount of rows I used for each color, or whether you'd like to create your own color combinations, when you're ready to change colors, the steps are the same. You're going to take your new color and place it on your hook. You're going to pull this new color through the loop of the current color that's on your hook. And you're going to pull everything tight. And you're going to fasten off your old color, meaning to cut the yarn that's attached to the skein. I like to leave an approximate 8 inch tail that I use to weave in my ends. Cut the yarn that's attached to your skein, pull the tails tight, and now you can begin the next row with your new color. So you'll simply chain two and turn, and then repeat row three with your new color. And now you're simply going to repeat row three as many times as you'd like. You can end after any row. After reaching your desired height, all that's left to do is with your yarn needle, weave in all your loose ends. And now you have a brand new zigzag granny stitch blanket. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoy making this blanket. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what colors you're using, who you're making your blanket for, and if there's anything at all I can do to help, please let me know. Again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, I'd be delighted if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.